host Renee and this is my Cash Stuffing journey. If you're new here, thank you so much for taking a chance and clicking on my video. I hope you decide to like, subscribe and stick around for a while. And if you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for your ongoing support. So today is going to be a new Budget 101 video and it's actually the first video in a new series. So for the new year, I am completely changing my, bud my binder system. I am completely changing... Um, how I budget and I'm just gonna see how it goes and if I like it great if I don't I can reevaluate so what I've done is I've created a, another worksheet pack so I'm gonna quickly go through the worksheets and then we're gonna do the first part which is I'm gonna call a budget binder audit so I am starting to get a little bit overwhelmed with my current system. I have a lot of envelopes, I have a lot of um, savings challenges particularly, and a lot of goals that I'm trying to reach. So I'm starting to get overwhelmed, and I've also had some financial s stuff going on. So I'm basically starting from scratch. So all of this stuff that I've done the last year, um, completely starting again. So it's like I'm starting from zero. Um, it that is upsetting because I have worked really 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 hard all year to try and achieve my goals or work towards my goals and starting over again is tough but it's also a positive in that I get to reevaluate my goals I get to I get to find my equilibrium again and I'm hoping that I can find the passion again because I while I love doing savings challenges the general monotonous cash stuffing I, I struggle with I, I struggle to stay motivated because I only can stuff a little bit here and there at a time like I only stuff like five dollars for example a week and that's great because it adds up but at the way at the way it's going I'm not gonna reach my goals and that is a little bit heartbreaking so it's okay to start over. It's it's okay that if financial stuff happens, you have to unstuff all your envelopes and start again. It's okay if your current system is not working for you and you need to revamp it. It's, it's okay to kind of fall off the wagon, dust yourself off and get back up again. It's okay. Um, you may not like your system. You may be brand new and may not know what your system is yet because we each the cash stuffing system as a whole is one thing but each person is an individual and so are your budgets so yes you might be using the cash stuffing system but it might look very different to my own or mine looks different to everybody else's so it's okay if your system is not working for you and it needs to change now for me to not feel overwhelmed I'm gonna do what's called a budget binder audit so I'm gonna go through each one of my binders I'm gonna list the like what the envelope is and I'm gonna do that for the for all my binders now this is not enough space for me I have a lot of envelopes and a lot of binders so I'm gonna try and make this sheet work um, this is going to be a free pack that I'm going to offer and you just have to send me an email. I am working on my website. I am aiming to have to launch it in the new year and it will be available on there for free. And hopefully we'll, while using these worksheets and watching these videos and working through the process with me, um, you'll be able to find a budget system that works for you. So once I've done my budget audit, I'm then going to list them in goals and priorities order. So, for example, I might have deposit, um, lawn maintenance, car maintenance, Evelyn and William. So, for example, Evelyn and William would be my priority. And then after that would be deposit. So, it's this is a very clear way of finding out what your priorities were um, are and in what order you want them in. Now, the reason I did this is because... I get so lost in all of the little the little goals that I, sometimes I forget the big picture. For example, like when I'm saving for car maintenance and car registration and back to school and birthdays and um, giveaways and subscriptions, I can forget that my main four goals have always will and always will be 
a deposit for a home, my emergency fund and my two children. So ultimately I have four goals. So if everything went, if everything goes tits up, I know it's probably not a great saying, but if everything is flipped on its head and I can only focus on four things, they were the four things I will pick. Everything else I can scrap, everything else I can deal with as it comes up, but those four goals, they are my main priority. And they have always been my priority. It's just sometimes I get lost in the little things. So this financial goals and priority list, you write down every single financial goal. So this could be every, every envelope. It could be your main goals. It could be what you're saving for, what your savings challenges are for. You write it in. I'm going to put envelopes, so I'm going to do all of my envelopes and then put them in priority list. That's going to make it very, very clear to you what your priorities are and what you need to focus on. It might also let you know where you can take things out. For example, one of my envelopes, the clothing envelope, I never use it. I think in the last six months, I think I used it once and that was to buy Les shoes because we didn't have the money at the time and he needed them. Any other time, I just when I get paid, I just go shopping. So um, it's not one of my priorities and it's not a goal. So I'm actually going to get rid of that. So yeah, by listing your financial goals and priorities, it, it lets you know where, you, where you're heading, what you need to do to get there and what you need to focus on and where you can cut things out if you need to. Okay, so then I'm going to do a savings challenge tracker. And this is going to be because I have these in my, um, I have these financial goals trackers in my binders, but they're not working. Um, there's not enough space. I forget to fill them out. I forget to tick them off. Um, there's not enough space if I do it multiple times. I just don't like it anymore. So what I'm going to do is I've created a, um, savings challenge tracker so every time I start a savings challenge I'm gonna put the start date in um, and then I'm gonna put the finish date in so that's letting me know what what the challenge is how much I saved when I started it and when I finished it so and then I'm gonna finish I'm gonna do this one as I go through um, now savings snowball let me find that these are a bit out of order unfortunately um, which annoys me but it's fine I can work with it so this is in conjun conjunction with um, the debt snowball so there's going to be debt confession debt snowball and saving snowball so a lot of people have heard the snowball method for debt um, that you write out all of your debts, which is the debt confession sheet here. You write out all your debts. I'm going to put down what's owing, when I started it, and when I paid it. So what's going to happen is I'm going to list all of my debts and how much is owing. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pay minimum repayments on everything, right? And I'm going to pay an extra little bit of money on one of them. Now I'm going to probably pick, a, you can do it many different ways. You can pick the ones that have higher interest. You can pick the ones that the larger amount, you can pick the ones that are a smaller amount. You can pick the ones that cost you the most each month. Um, you can do it any way you please. For me, I find more motivation to get things paid off. So I'm going to pick the smallest ones first and I'm going to work my way up. So once I've paid off that debt, like paid off the minimum, the smallest debt first, I'm going to roll that monthly payment plus extra into the next one. Then when I've paid that one off, I'm going to transfer all of the monthly payment, the extra, plus that additional first debt into the next one. And it's like a snowball. It starts out really small at the top and as it goes down the hill, it gains momentum. So that's, that's the debt snowball method. Well, I'm going to flip it on its head as well and do a savings snowball method. So once I've done my debts, I have created a debt snowball payment. 
So the date of the payment, what debt it's for, how much I paid, and how much it's owing. And I'm going to keep track of them through this. So these two, can't, these two go together. Now, the saving snowball is different. It's basically the same concept, but with savings. So I am going to pick my goals. Um, I'm doing a complete new layout of my binders, so hopefully this works. And it will probably make a bit more sense when I have my binders. But what I'm going to do essentially is I'm going to have a high priority and a low priority binder. In that binder, I'm gonna, it's going to have two parts. It's going to have a savings goals and it's going to have annual expenses. So basically, I'm going to have the exact same binder categories I have now. It's just going to, they're just going to look different. So I'm going to cash stuff my high priority, our uh, savings goals, they're going to be my priority. So that's going to be my home deposit, my emergency, and my two kids. And anything else that's urgent at that time. So for example, say for example it's April and I have car registration in July, I might move that envelope from my low priority binder into my high priority binder. And vice versa, something might not be considered high priority any, anymore, so it's going to go into low priority. And I was inspired in that regard by um, Save with Alicia. She does that with her envelopes. They float in and out of budgets, and I'm going to try it and see how it works. But I'm also going to do that with savings. So, for example, in my high priority annual expenses, say I get my car registration funded. It's like, okay... Well, where can I roll that money over to? I put a put a fully funded slip in and I'm going to roll that money onto the next one. So, now I've got my car registration funded. Let's focus on birthdays. So, I'm going to what I was paying into birthdays, what I was paying into car registration, I'm going to now roll into on top of the birthday stuffing. So say for example on a normal basis birthday gets $5, car registration gets $80. That means once the car registration is fully funded, I'm going to roll that $80 over into birthday and the birthday now gets $85. Once that's fully funded, I'm going to roll that over into the next one which could be subscriptions. So now instead of the $5 subscriptions gets, it's now going to get $90 because I've rolled that 85 over. I hope this makes sense. But I created this one. So this is the debt and savings snowball. So for example, you start off with your minimum repayment plus extra. Once this debt's are paid, you roll it over into the next one. So now this is getting a minimum repayment and an extra payment and so forth and so forth. So it goes down the hill. The savings is exactly the same. I'm starting out with a smaller weekly amount, then as I meet my goals, I roll it up into the next one. Once I've met that goal, I roll it up into the next one. Once I've met that one, I roll it up into the next one. So I'm hoping that by doing this, I will be able to fund my goals and I will also see the benefits of that quicker, which will keep me motivated. So instead of saving for 12 months for my car registration, because of this method, yeah, I might stuff it slowly for a few months and then I'll stuff it quite heavily for the next few. And that's how I'm hoping it will work. I have never seen savings snowball before. Um, if you have seen it and you've got any videos on it, please let me know. I would love to watch them. But I've never seen it. So I'm hoping that this system works. Not only that, as you pay down the debt, you can roll this into the savings. So once I've paid off all my debts and I'm determined to pay them off this at the end of 2023, I can then roll that all over into 2024. So that those minimum payments and extra payments I was making on all my debt, that could be hundreds of dollars. And that could then roll over into my savings snowball. So I hope that made sense. When I go through and go through each individual part, um, I will be explaining these a bit more in detail. Um, yeah, I think that's it. So that's gonna that's kind of a summary of what each sheet is going to be for. I thought we could do the budget binder audit together now, and then for the next budget 101, I am going to do the 
um, financial priorities sheet. Okay, so let's pull out. Uh, let's not do that one. We'll do the savings goal first. Okay, so we've got uh, medication. We've got emergency. Uh, we've got home deposit. Uh, we've got Evelyn. And then we've got William. I'm going to put these on the same line. Um, just because they're like they're the same, they get the same amount and everything. Um, I'm also going to put Les and Renee on the same line. Uh, we've got lawn maintenance. We've got car maintenance. Uh, we've got school expenses. Uh, Williams Bowling. Uh, we've got Health. We've got Specialist. We've got Household. We've got Clothing. Uh, we've got Concert. I'm just going to continue down this way. We've got Etsy. Uh, we've got Ahead. And we've got Stockpile. Okay, so that's in my Savings Goals Binder. Um, I'll highlight this. And then I'm going to get out my so we'll get rid of this one. Uh, and then I'm going to put number one. And I'm going to put savings goals continued. Okay, so that's binder one. So binder two is going to be now I'm not going to put savings challenges on this one because they change so often and it's got its own tracker. So okay, so binder two is my annual expenses. And this one is family vacation. Our birthdays. Easter. Our car registration. Our Mother's and Father's Day. Uh, subscriptions and I'm also going to put Christmas in this one even though I use savings saving challenges to fund Christmas and then finally binder four technically it's three but I can leave it there so we've got my just roll it in glitter binder So I have my, I have savings, I have expenses, I have postage, I have the PO box, and then I have taxes.
Okay, so that is my budget binder audit. So what I've done is I've gone through every single binder that I'm going to include in this. I'm not doing savings challenges because, I, I, like I said, they change so often that it's going to be too hard to keep a track of them. But these are kind of the main things that I feel that my household um, needs to run and set my savings goals. Okay, so... Once we have done that, so wait a minute. I lost my highlighter. Dang it. I don't know what I've done with that highlighter. Yeah. So annual expenses and then just roll it in glitter. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and I'm going to um them into priority order so as I mentioned before my first priority is going to be um, you know what I might put Evelyn and William at the first one And then after that, I'm going to put home deposit because that is our goal, our ultimate goal. And in saying that, when we own our own home, that will also have a level of security for Evelyn and William. Um, and then I'm going to put emergency. Now, for Evelyn and William, I want $500 and I want it per year. For the home deposit, 40,000 we've been told we need which is a staggering amount of money and that's going to be open so whenever we can get it for emergency I would love a thousand dollar emergency fund but at the moment it's just not viable for us and what I learned last year was setting realistic goals um, I would love a $1,000 emergency fund people tell you to have a $1,000 emergency fund but just realistically it's just not in my budget right now and I'm gonna work really really hard to get that but at the moment realistically a $500 emergency budget is is, a, is good for me I can reach that I think um, and then I thought I could do it per year so if I could get $500 per year for my emergency fund, that'll just slowly tick over, which I think is great. So eventually I will get to my $1,000. Okay, so now in regards to savings goals, hmm, I think the next one for me um, would be Christmas because that is such a big, um, sorry, my cat's decided to visit. <laughs> Here she comes. <sighs> yes. It's been a while since you've seen the people. Hmm? No, don't do that. No. <sighs> really? This is how we're going to roll today? <laughs> Sorry, guys. I've got to try. She's a very floofy cat. Mom. <laughs> I love you. That's Lexi, everybody. <laughs> um, yep, yeah, so Christmas is going to be a big one for me. Um, I am excessive when it comes to Christmas. Um, so I'm going to do... I'm going to do $3,000. Now, how many of you spat out your drink, let out a curse word, or froze in fear at that amount? <laughs> I know I did but that's that's a goal like I may not get there this year I think I, I did pretty well um, I, I got well over a thousand dollars this year so that's amazing but next year I'm I can plan better and I'm gonna follow that plan through like towards the end of this year I was planning better for Christmas than I was at the start so with the planning I came up with the end of the year I'm gonna carry that over into next year so this one's going to be, I don't know why I'm doing it per year when it's actually per. Because 
else that's gonna bother me if I leave it like that. So per Adam, per Adam. Okay, so then Christmas. So then I think the next one for me, the next big one would be car registration. Because that is a big expense because that's our car registration and our insurance. And for both of them, it's $900. That's for Les's car. I am scheduled to get my package vehicle. So a package vehicle, if you've never heard of a package vehicle, it is when your employer, it's a staff benefit. So my employer orders me a brand new car based on what I want. We're given a list to choose from, like there's 30 vehicles on it, but you can choose. They, they order you a new vehicle and it falls under their fleet management. They will pay for fuel, they pay registration, insurance, roadside assist and servicing so maintenance they pay all of that and every fortnight i pay a set amount towards that so my new car i am getting a mazda cx5 um brand new and i will be paying 320 dollars a fortnight so every two weeks and like i said that's covering the car payment my registration my insurance my roadside assist my fuel and my maintenance so i basically don't have to worry about taking doing anything with the car it's all covered or it's all covered at the end of the term i can decide to buy that car at a discounted price or i can trade it in and get a new one so car registration is just les at the moment but one of my goals next year is to start a new car fund so that by the end of the... Okay guys, my phone is going flat so my light just went off. Let me just plug my phone in and I'll be back. Okay guys, sorry, my phone went flat and my light went out and then I had to sit here and wait while it charged enough to put the light back on. So what I might do is, I just realized when I was sitting here, I might start crossing these off um, so I can keep a track of everything. So emergency, home deposit, uh, there was Christmas, um, car registration. Okay, so then for me, I will probably do uh, Williams Bowling and that's just to make sure that it this is maintained um, so I'm just going to put in um, $200 and then have it ongoing <coughs> in the grand scheme of things that's probably not going to need a lot of work so I'm just going to keep it at $200 but it is a priority for me because William has very very restricted interests so when he lacks something I always want to have money sitting there ready for him to go so that if he shows interest I can be like yep sure we've got the money let's go let's do that or if you want to sign up for this class sure I've got the money let's do it let's give it a go um, so I'm always gonna maintain that one and that one's pretty high up on my um, on my list so let's cross this one off and then next one I would say Probably uh, birthdays would be another one, um, and I'm going to do $500 uh, per person, and that's per annum. This sheet's a mess. I'm going to have to redo this because that's going to, no, I'm not going to handle that very well. Um, so let's check off birthdays. And then, hmm, I might do health and specialists. And I think I would like $500 in this one ongoing. <coughs> because I seem to always be getting sent to different specialists, different tests. So I'd like to have a pretty robust health account. I do get rebates from Medicare, um, 
but you still need to have the money up front. Um, what else is there? What would be next, do you think? Hmm. And that's what's so good about this, doing this budget by an audit and then putting them in priorities, because it makes you really, really look at your categories, and it's like, well, do I really need that? Like, really? Um, so then I might do... I might do um, car maintenance because the Kia is due for some maintenance. <coughs> when I get my new car, Les is going to take her off the road for a couple of days and do like a full on service, rebuild stuff. Um, <coughs> he is a diesel mechanic by trade, <coughs> so he can do all of the work himself, which is great. Um, so. I'm looking forward to that and she desperately needs it. She's she's the best little car. Um, so I would probably like a thousand dollars in her and then have that ongoing. <coughs> Cause she's gonna probably need that. Um, because her air conditioning is gone, um, which is great in an Australian summer, no air conditioning. Um, she needs a new clutch. Les has been babying that clutch for god knows how long. Um, and then she needs a full service. So, <coughs> that's going to be a nice chunk of change. So, we'll tick off car maintenance. And then... Hmm. And then, I'm going to put in me and Les. Because I do think that we need to be have access to money to do things that we like. <coughs> and that one doesn't really have a goal. It's just going to be like whatever's in there is in there but I do think is it is it is important to have money there for self-care and things like that <coughs> hmm. and then I think I'm gonna put in medication Easter so medication Easter <coughs> And then I think I'm going to do uh, Mother's and Father's Day. Mm. And then school expenses. Because his school um, is amazing and we don't really have any expenses. Um, like I think the whole time he's been there this year we've had two things that we've had to pay for. Um, they're amazing. A lot of it's covered by them. So... We're not used to that. So I don't want to have it too high on the list. Um, and then I might do... Um, I might do family... <coughs> we don't really use our family vacation envelope. We use it for experiences instead. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's not really a high priority, but it's not the lowest one either. So let's tick that off. So what do we got left? We've got lawn maintenance, household clothing, concert, Etsy, a head stockpile, subscription. Okay, so let's go ahead. Household. Stockpile. And then subscriptions. <coughs> um, so what, what do we do? Family vacation. So then we did a head. We did household. We did stockpile. And then we did subscriptions. So that's all of our annual expenses covered. Um, and then we've got clothing concert, Etsy, and lawn maintenance. So I'm going to do lawn maintenance. And I'm going to do Etsy. Hopefully you can still see this. Um, Etsy. This one is a long-term goal, and my goal is $3,000. And that is so that I can order the um, 
like order my customized order to sell in my shop and I need three thousand dollars which I feel a little nauseous every time I think about it um and then I might do a concert and the goal is eighteen hundred dollars and I'm nearly there um it doesn't have an end date um and then I might do clothing last now clothing is I'm gonna get rid of it because I never use it so I'm going to actually cross that one out because I'm gonna get rid of it <coughs> okay so now we've got my savings goals which is binder one and binder two which is my annual expenses they are all on this sheet now the just roll it in glitter I've included it in my budget audit because it is important to be aware of what you have and what you're saving for but these ones are not are not priorities at all I just put whatever I can whenever I can just so that I've kind of got a little bit of an emergency buffer if something goes wrong I can pull money from that for my business but they're not they're not a goal I'm not working towards anything um, the only kind of thing I'm working towards is my PO box to make sure that I have I have that funded every year but I'm already in advance I've already paid for 2023's renewal and I'm working on 2024 so that's kind of everything so under here I'm going to put this is going to be um, just roll it in glitter and that's going to be savings uh, expenses uh, postage PO box and then taxes and then these ones are going to be all blank this one is $150 per year oh no wait I've written that on the wrong line do you know what I mean I'd have to reprint this sheet <laughs> and then taxes is the same Okay, so now you can see where my priorities are and it's given me a really clear indication of what categories I need to put them in. So, for example, when I get my high priority binder, it's going to have things like William and Evelyn, home deposit, emergency, Christmas and car registration in it. Then for the annual expenses, <coughs> I will have things like uh, birthdays, Easter things like that so <coughs> I'm hoping by doing it this way and doing the audit I can clearly see what my goals are I just realized I haven't filled this out so let's quickly fill this out so I want this to be $200 and that's ongoing um, Easter I'm gonna say 500 and I want I want this by probably the 1st of March because then I can start shopping for Easter. Um, Mother's and Father's Day, um, I might do 500, um, and that's uh, doesn't really have a date. It's just each one, so it's 250 per person. Um, school expenses, 200, and have this ongoing. Family vacation, nothing. Well, you just whatever's in there's in there. <coughs> now ahead. I am saving, so in my savings goals binder, I made a savings challenge and it's my ahead challenge. So when this is full, which will be $200, I'm going to pull the money out, wipe this clean, transfer that money into an ahead binder I'm going to create, which I haven't done it now because I haven't finished yet. <coughs> I'm going to create an ahead binder and I am going to... Um, divide that money up into categories I think that's how I'm gonna do it I might change that but I think that's how I'm gonna do it because I did think about like just putting it in my savings account and just having a head <clears throat> and just if I need to pay something I can dip into that um, but then I thought no because what if I just need specifically the water bill or like what if I need to keep track of specific bills which I do 
So I'm like, no, I'll just do it with the binder. <coughs> <coughs> oh, sorry guys. I've been talk I've been doing a lot of filming today. So that one's gonna be $120 and that's where I'm going. Um, household probably two hundred. And that's gonna be ongoing. Um, same with the stockpile, two hundred. Um, now subscriptions, I'm going to do probably 300 per year. And then lawn maintenance, 200 And that's going to be ongoing. <coughs> okay. So now that I've put everything into perspective, I know what I need to be focusing on. What, what my goals are. So what my high priority ones are, what my low priority ones are kind of when I need to save things so for example the Christmas one that will be a high priority but say for example something more important comes up I can switch it into a low priority temporarily or for example Evelyn's birthday is in March so I might take it from low priority to high priority the month before her birthday because then I can really start I can really start cash stuffing it to get those funds up quickly <clears throat> or for example having a like a doctor's appointment I know that I've got a scare like for example I know on Tuesday I have an ultrasound which is $170 so if that was previously in a low priority binder I will swing it into a high priority get that money saved up for that appointment and then once I've had that appointment switch it back into a low priority so that's what I'm hoping is how it's going to work. I have no idea if it's going to work. This is the first time I've <clears throat> this is the first time I've done the cash stuffing for a full year. So I'm trying to take what I've learned over the last year and apply it to my new system. So this is the first step. So for the next one, for the next step, we are going to do we're going to do the debt confession. So the next 101 video will be debt confession. So basically, once I've finalized everything for the year, I'm going to go through debt by debt and find out how much I earn, how much I owe, how much it is, <coughs> and go from there. So then once I know what all my debts are, what all my minimum repayments are, um, I can I can do all of that stuff. So yeah, I mean, uh, I think I need to change this one because I was just doing debt and then it's owing and then I might do, um, hmm. I wonder if I could do debt, owing, paid and then balance so that then this balance goes into here and then this one goes here. I don't know. I'll have to fiddle with this one because I don't really like the layout of this. I don't think it's going to work. But we shall see. Okay, thank you so much for watching this video. I know it was a long one, but I hope you can see how I did that step, that budget binder audit and doing my priorities and goals. And hopefully as we go through this, through this budget 101 overhaul series, that why we're doing this and putting so much work into this, hopefully it will pay off in the future. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to live, laugh, love. And when life gets hard, just roll it in glitter. Bye, guys.